Yo, what's up, y'all? Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a safe New Year's. Happy holidays, all that stuff. Uh, so 2018 was a great year for music, I think. Um, a lot of records came out this past year that I really loved. Uh, so I just wanted to make a little top 10 list for you guys. Um, so number 10 for me was J. Cole, K.O.D. I thought that record was really great. I didn't think it had like bangers, like Forest Hills, but I still thought it was great. Like uh, all his music videos were really cool. There's not much that he releases that really bums me out ever. So um, I thought it was a really strong J. Cole album. Um, number nine was the Tom Mish album, Geography. Um, and he's kind of like, in my opinion, I guess, a modern John Mayer if you add a lot more jazz to it, which I thought was really cool. Um, he has some really good features on that record. A lot of it's really weird and like diverse. I feel like he could be a lot more straightforward if he wanted to, and he kind of chooses not to. I thought that album was, was really great. Oh, number eight. Okay, so Don Broco, Technology. Uh, this album was pretty much the soundtrack of my summer because they were on Warp Tour and we love those guys So we we tried to go catch them as many times as we could um, When they were playing so that album is really cool. Um, I think the use of like heavy riffs with pop elements um, Obviously, I am a fan of that if I'm playing in issues, so um, but I think they're very strategic in how they do it and also their songwriting and their composition and structure is like really really spot-on especially on that record uh seven is okay so this isn't actually an album it's more of a single um but it's a part of an ep that's not out yet but I, i've heard the ep and it's great um so number seven is lotus eater the fear um and again it's just a single i think it's some of the most interesting heavy music i've heard in a long time uh they're coming out of the uk um i know they are in the same circle as loathe and that was my favorite album of last year definitely worth checking out if you're into heavier stuff um i think they're doing some some stuff that i haven't really heard before um number six was the radiant children ep trying uh this is is Ty or Lofile or Scout, however you remember him or know him. This is his new band. Um, he's playing drums and producing. Uh, he actually mixed the EP and it sounds incredible. So this is his new band and it is great. It's five songs and um, each one of them is like different in its own way but has a lot of identity and there's like this really cool, uh, I guess it's like an interlude track. It's more of like, I guess sound design kind of stuff that's really cool. Um, but I love that EP and that was on repeat a lot of the year. So number five was Polyphia, New Levels, New Devils. Love the album, love the band. Uh, as far as instrumental music goes, I think they're doing some of the most interesting things I've seen in a long time. Uh, they're pushing everything forward. It feels very modern. You know, they use a lot of trap elements. They all can play their ass off because of course they can. Yeah, I don't know. I was The features were really cool. Like all the guitar features they had were great. I don't know. I love that record. I loved it. So definitely recommend that one. All right, coming in at number four was the Charlie Puth record, Voice Notes. At first, when I first heard this album, I like kind of thought it's hit and miss, which I feel like some of the tracks are for me, but the tracks I really like, I really, really like them. Um, I think they're awesome. I think Boy is really, really good. Attention obviously is great. I think that was like one of the big radio singles. Um, he does have some stuff that I am curious as to why it's on the album that I have a harder time getting into, but I, uh, I saw him live this past year and it was really, the show was great. His band's great, he shreds, which is sick. But yeah, I really love that record. Um, I think it's very interesting and dangerous pop music, which is cool. That's that's definitely my vibe. Coming in at number three was uh, Mac Miller, Swimming, uh, which we obviously lost him this year and it sucks, man, it bummed me out. Uh, I've been listening to him since kids like i i love mac miller but uh we'll, we'll keep it lighthearted. but rest in peace man i i do love this album i thought as an artist he over the years like really kept progressing um you know thundercat like mayor like a lot of guys played on this record and you can really hear it like his use of like real instrumentation and how much he experimented with everything um even like singing i know that's kind of something he wanted to branch out into more um, and I, I love it on this record. I think it's great. All right, so it comes down to the last two, and this was really tough for me, because any of you guys that really know me know how much I love the 1975. Um, I love that band. I think they do a lot of things right, from just taking risks musically, to like how they brand themselves, to how they present themselves. All of it, I, I think, is really consistent and it's really good. 1975 comes in at number two, though. Uh, a brief inquiry into online relationships. They always have weird title names, but... I really like this album. The first single they released, 
I was a little worried. Um, what's it called? What's it called? Give yourself a try. That's what it's called. That first single, I was like, uh, I know they usually release something weird at first just to like get people talking and that's what that was. So I wasn't sure that I loved the single, but as more singles kept rolling out and then you can hear finally, you know, months later you hear the whole album in context. It's like, oh, this all fits perfectly. Lyrical content's great. Instrumental stuff is super simple and weird and perfect. I love that album. I think it's really cool. Probably their most diverse album yet. I don't know, I love that band. I think they just, they take a lot of risks. And it's cool because they, they seem like they are rewarded. You know, they're, they're a huge band now. And they could have gone the route of just like, they had on their self-titled record, like years ago, they had Chocolate, which was a huge hit. And they could have just kept doing that. And I think they would have been just fine. But they stayed weird and they kept putting out super weird music. And I think this album is probably the weirdest thing they've put out. But I love weird and I love that record. And again, it was hard. It was hard to choose between this record or my number one. For number one, it was Tierra Whack Whack World. This is an album with 15 songs and they're all one minute. I first listened to this record because I saw she was supporting Black and I was just interested because I, I saw Black in Atlanta like a year or two ago and he had uh, Sabrina Claudio open for him and I, I loved her and I got really into her. So I was like, okay, he has a good track record for bringing out artists. So. Um, I checked out her album, and I, you know, I, I'll listen to Spotify while I'm playing games or whatever. The first time I listened through it, I was like, wow, these songs are really short. They're all really, really good and really unique and like super creative, but also really catchy within a minute. So like, I was really confused as I was listening. Then I went online, and so she has the music video for the album, which is 15 minutes. So it's just the entire music video for the entire record. It honestly blew my mind. It's super creative. It's really catchy. Her ability to convey her ideas that she wants for each song within a minute while keeping it hooky and like creating this super weird atmosphere. Um, like all of her lyrical content is incredible. I don't know, this was, this was just the album that grabbed me the most this year. Um, and again, it was a hard choice. I'm a 1975 fanboy, I love that band, but Tierra Wack definitely took it. Like, I don't think there was anything that came out this year that was as creatively captivating, in my opinion. From like the very first time I saw the music video, it was just mind blowing to me. Um, and then I kind of kept diving into it, and then I punished all the guys and issues. I was like, yo, this is sick, like you have to check it out. Highly recommend you check out all these albums. Um, 2018, again, was a really good year for music, I think. And 2019, I'm sure will be great, because we finally are gonna be releasing the new Issues record, um, which I just got the first round of mixes for, and I am stoked. We worked really hard. Um, I'll quit plugging, but when you hear it, you'll hear it, and we're, we could not be more happy with it. We're really stoked. All right, so let me know if I missed anything. Are there any albums you guys feel like that I completely looked over or that slid under my radar, I would definitely love to check them out. So leave them in the comments. Also, let's do a Q&A video. So in the comments below, if you have any questions for me, I'll do it on Instagram too, but any questions for me at all, new issues record, you know, how things have been going the past couple years. I know I haven't really made too many videos. So if there's any huge questions you got for me, or if you're just like, yo, what head do you have on your snare? Anything, just leave them in the comments below and I will catch you guys next time.